Now, let's talk about Zollinger Ellison syndrome. As a, this also is not a new topic for you. Uh, we have already studied this a little bit in peptic ulcer disease topic. This is one of the condition where you know intractable type of peptic ulcers are developed, and this is caused by a tumor. Okay, mainly uh, in the pancreas, which is known as gastrinoma. So let's enter into the topic. Zollinger Ellison syndrome is a triad of okay these uh, three things together gastrin producing tumor which is known as gastrinoma that is mainly present in the pancreas gastric acid hypersecretion as a result of this gastrin and severe peptic ulceration because of this gastric acid so three things occurring together is known as Zollinger Ellison syndrome now there are certain important characteristic feature here in this condition this peptic ulceration doesn't only develop in the stomach or duodenum. It may develop distal to the first part of the duodenum, that is in the second part, in third part, in fourth part, or even distal to that in the jejunum or even ileum, okay? Mainly in the jejunum. So this is a very, very significant point about zollinger ellison syndrome. And second thing, it is intractable regarding the treatment. Intractable means difficult to control with the help of medical management because it is caused by a tumor. The tumor is constantly producing gastrin hormone. Okay, and that is the culprit here. So until and unless we go for surgery, the complete cure of the symptoms will not occur. The tumor is situated in the pancreas or sometimes in duodenum also, okay, but mainly in the pancreas. In approximately 25% of the patient, the gastrinoma is part of MEN1 syndrome. So what is MEN1 syndrome? The multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 syndrome. Exactly. That's absolutely right. This is known as multiple, okay, multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome. Let me write it here for you. Multiple endocrine neo plasia syndrome okay men syndrome these are of different type men1 men2 and 2 is again divided into 2a and 2b now let's focus on men1 uh, for the time being there are three p's here okay three p the three p's are pituitary involvement okay pituitary gland then parathyroid gland okay another p and then pancreas, these three P's are affected. So this is a disorder of these three important type of endocrine glands. So from the pituitary gland, we have got pituitary tumors, different type of pituitary tumors, for example, prolactinoma, okay? Different types, other types of tumor can also develop there. From the parathyroid gland, parathyroid hyperplasia or parathyroid tumor. And from the pancreas, we have gastrinoma and insulinoma. Insulinoma is also commonly seen. It's an insulin-secreting tumor that is from the you know, beta cells of the pancreas. If the tumor develops there, you know, so insulin can also be coming out. Another is gastrinoma. So remember that. This is autosomal dominant disorder, which may run in the family. And in some of the textbook, uh, it is also mentioned uh, as a, another term, which is known as Wormer syndrome. Wormer syndrome. So sometimes, you know, this type of questions can be asked. If a student is doing wonderfully well in the exam, the teacher may focus on this type of question to give you better marks. Remember, they don't get nervous if the teacher is asking some difficult questions towards the end of your Viva exam. We never ask difficult questions in the beginning, you know, we don't. This is a biasness. We always ask similar type of question, but if you are doing wonderfully well, then I will go for these difficult questions towards the end. That is the way. Let's move on. Now, how this gastrin is uh, causing the problem here? Let's talk about this now. So gastrin works on stomach parietal cell. We all know, remember the relevant physiology. 
we, we talked that a long time ago, but you still remember. There are three important you know, substances which act on the parietal cells and stimulate the acid secretion. They are acetylcholine, histamine, and the gastrin. Acetylcholine, histamine, and the gastrin. Gastrin is one of the very important ones. So it causes them to secrete more hydrogen ion into the stomach lumen, which is a part of hydrochloric acid. In addition, gastrin also acts as a trophic factor for the parietal cell, causing parietal cell hyperplasia. So more number of parietal cells are, are present there, and that will definitely release or secrete more hydrochloric acid. Zollinger ellison syndrome may develop diarrhea and malabsorption due to inhibition of pancreatic lipase by the excessive gastric acid. This is another you know, additional type of finding here. Okay. Now, listen properly. This is an interesting type of mechanism. Now, there is a lot of gastric acid release or secretion in Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Now, that gastric acid will uh, you know, go towards the duodenum. Okay? But when it reaches duodenum, if it is a normal amount of gastric acid, okay, it can be neutralized by the alkaline juice which is present in the duodenum. But in this case, that alkaline juice is not enough to neutralize this high amount of gastric acid. So acid is still active there. That acid will inactivate the pancreatic enzyme which are present in that area. Remember, pancreatic enzymes are coming there through pancreatic duct. So those pancreatic enzymes are inactivated by the excessive level of hydrochloric acid. And if they are inactivated, they cannot perform their function like amylase, lipase, trypsin, chymotrypsin, and all those things. So important one is lipase here. Lipase is the enzyme which digests the fat. So excessive fat will be excreted in the stool without digestion. And what is the term we use for that? Yes? What term? Stratoria. Stratoria. Exactly. Stratoria. Exactly. This is known as stratoria. So you remember in Zollinger Ellison syndrome, malabsorption can happen, importantly, steatoria, and that is the mechanism. Now, these are the clinical features of Zollinger Ellison syndrome. They include malabsorption, which we just discussed, diarrhea is a part of malabsorption, steatoria, again, same thing, and peptic ulceration in atypical area. That point you should never forget in atypical area. Now, we all know in stomach, peptic ulcer can occur. In first part of the duodenum, it can occur. But in second part of the duodenum, third, fourth, or even you know, proximal part of the duodenum, it is not, not occurring at all. And this is one of the exceptional cases where peptic ulcer can develop even in this area. In the picture, it is clearly shown here, duodenal ulcers due to hyperacidity. Now, this is not the first part of the duodenum. First part of the duodenum is here. Okay, see this? This is second part. Probably they have shown it in the distal part of the second part or the th proximal third part here. Now, let's move on. How to diagnose it? Okay, how to confirm the diagnosis of uh, uh, Zollinger Ellison syndrome? We need to make sure that there is a high fasting plasma gastrin level. Okay, we need to show that. So gastrin level is excessively increased in case of Zollinger Ellison syndrome because of gastrinoma. There is a high gastric acid secretion. We need to confirm that also. And this is also because of the gastrin. So patient has a high elevated basal gastric acid, more than 15 milligram per hour. If we go for secretin stimulation test, then there is much more a release of the gastrin. Okay, than in the normal portion. Secretin is a hormone which is uh, you know released by intestine. Okay, uh, and that secretin will act on the pancreas and will stimulate the secretion from the pancreas. That is a function of secretin. So in this condition, uh, the more amount of gastrin will be released. If we go for you know a CT scan, then that tumor can be visible. Okay pancreatic tumor or even duodenal tumor can be visible by CT scan. Now, finally, what is the treatment? 
Now, there are symptomatic treatment and there are curative treatment. Now, symptomatic treatment means we go for the control of the peptic ulceration. So most patients are managed with proton pump inhibitors, but this is never the curative treatment. PPI, they are the most powerful type of antipeptic drug, so we can go for them. Octreotide can also control acid hypersecretion in patients with zollinger ellison syndrome. So it can be tried, octreotide is one of the medicine or drug. Cure is only possible if the tumors are surgically removed, but we need to confirm where are they first. That is done by CT scan, and then surgery can be done. Total gastrectomy and parietal cell vagotomy are only seldom necessary. These are difficult surgery, you know, and they are associated with a lot of complication. So why to go for that if we can remove the tumor itself? So as far as possible, the tumor is really removed. Everything will be fine, okay? But sometimes if a tumor cannot be removed or if a very small uh, type of tumor which cannot be resected, something like that, then uh, these difficult type of surgery are necessary. These are the points.